Hey, hello, welcome. My name is Kevin Barrett. I'm a health and safety professional, and this is Provoking Safety. I did a re video recently on masks, their purpose, and them being part of the solution, not all of it, and how they work within the hierarchy of controls. And I did promise that I was gonna follow up. So today, that's what I'm gonna do. Well, or maybe this evening, depending on where you're watching. I thought we could have a look at how uh, controls are layered or combined and controlling the spread of COVID-19. So let's get right into it and have a look at how all of this works. First off, what's meant by layered controls? And as I said, I did a video regarding uh, masks, but I also did a video regarding the hierarchy of controls. I'll leave a link to the video below, and I'll also, I promise, I'll leave one at the end of the video as well. So stick around for that, and, and you can have a bit more of a look on the hierarchy of controls and what layered controls mean. Essentially, it's where one single control won't necessarily do the job. And we're used to different kinds of controls like PPE, for instance. But this is a case where we can combine multiple kinds of controls or multiple types of controls to um, have a better chance at reducing the risk. Now, the notion is, as I said, one layer itself won't be sufficient and it requires additional layers. There's five layers uh, for the hierarchy of controls. Elimination, which is the most preferred, substitution, engineering, administrative, and PPE. As I said, I did a previous video, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But let's dig into it and what, talk about what uh, layered controls mean to you in the idea of controlling the infection spread of COVID-19. I stumbled across uh, a neat explanation by a fellow who owns a website called Sketchplanation. That's a mouthful. And he explained the layer controls. Uh, have a look at this picture right here. Really good, explains how controls are layered. And he used a uh, accident causation model created by a fellow named James Reason. It's sometimes called the cumulative effect or model or the cumulative act effect model. Essentially, it's used in a lot of different processes from cybersecurity to even accident causation, which was the original intention of the model. It does explain visually how masks alone won't reduce the spread of COVID-19. However, there's a better process out there or a better diagram, shall we say, and I found this one by a fellow named uh, Dr. Ian McKay and it works really good. Now, I will admit that I did make a small change to it. And what I did is I uh, exchanged where surface cleaning was at the very end, and I moved it back behind uh, fast and sensitive testing and contact tracing. There's a reason why I'll explain it a little bit later on in the video. So stick around for it, and, and so I'll explain why I did that. As you can see, there's layers of Swiss cheese, shall we say. And, and what it does is it shows that one layer or one set of controls is not necessarily enough. So I'm just going to break them down and let's have a look at the diagram. So right there you have physical distance and ventilation. Now, distancing could be considered also an administrative control. I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, but because there's uh, instruction, signage, but even a lot of uh, organizations, such as if you have a look at this picture, Walmart has gone to marking their sidewalk in places where you can actually separate. So that separation becomes almost a barrier between each person and the possibility of infection. So in a sense, distancing or physical distancing or social, social distancing, if you want to call it that, could be considered also a, an engineering control. Now, the other thing is increased ventilation or more effective ventilation for wherever the case may be. Now, you're likely used to ventilation if you look at, say, this picture of a welder and, and doing their work and there's uh, an arm that's taking the fumes away from them. But it's also been proven and medical science has found that increasing the amount of ventilation and fresh air exchange helps to reduce the possibility of infection. So between physical distancing and ventilation, they can be considered uh, engineering controls. There's some other ones that you might not be aware of and or you may be aware of or you may have seen and, and just not regarded at all 
is plastic Lexan or poly barriers to protect service workers such as bus drivers or retail cashiers, etc. And you've likely seen them erected in stores. Those all uh, represent engineering controls or an engineering layer in the layered control system. The next set or the next step down in the hierarchy of controls is an administrative control. Basically, once again, providing instruction or changing how people do things. And as I mentioned before, the physical distancing is also a bit of an administrative control because uh, different chief medical officers and chief medical officers of health have provided that guideline of staying uh, six feet or greater apart. So it's, in a sense, an administrative control, but there's others, and let's have a look at them. If you look in the diagram, you have masks, hand hygiene, and surface cleaning all grouped together. Really and truthfully, they don't fit under an engineering control, and they're certainly not PPE. Because, and I've done a video on what masks do, they actually pre prevent or restrict the vector, the exhaled air, in your breath from moving beyond the layer of the mask. So, in a sense, they're more of an administrative control. There's been instruction provided, and the mask provides a bit of a layer to restrict that force. So, it could be considered an engineering control on your face for the protection of others, but we won't get into that. But if you look at the diagram, masks, hand hygiene, and surface cleaning have all been directed, and we all know that uh, with all of these together, it helps reduce the spread even more so. And a lot of people have this um, issue regarding having to use hand sanitizer or uh, frequent hand washing. And I, I just want you to do me a favor, maybe go to the bathroom and then without washing your hands, go make a sandwich. It's gross, gross. Ew, ew, ew. For you, not for somebody else. Gross, no. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think so. The idea is, it, it, the more we wash our hands and use proper hand hygiene, the less that we're going to have this touch transfer going on. There's other examples, as I've said, the social distancing arrows, delineation, and having arrows going up and down the aisles, but these are all grouped together for administrative controls. This last one, PPE. It's, of course, PPE is in the lowest level of the hierarchy of controls, and in most cases, the general public is not going to use PPE. We're not. Uh, a lot of people confuse the surgical mask that you may use as PPE, and it's not. As long as you have a face covering, you're restricting the mode of travel. However, PPE is used in a lot of different cases, uh, clinical settings, uh, extended care homes, and um, uh, hospital settings, clinical settings, medical settings, things like that. But also, too, is they're being frequently recommended for workers in homeless shelters and other social uh, care facilities. Some examples, and of course these aren't in the diagram, are of course uh, specially treated uh, N95 masks, and I'm not going to get into the argument about mm, how small the virus is, etc. But uh, those coupled with face shields and or uh, nitrile or vinyl gloves are being used in these settings to help protect the worker themselves. Not the people the worker is working on, but protect the worker themselves. One final note on PPE, and I've seen a lot of comments on social media regarding PPE, and it's regarding retail workers wearing gloves. Keep in mind, once again, that uh, chief medical officers of health in every jurisdiction in Canada has provided uh, directives for workers in different sectors. These different sectors are, of course, like the retail sector, medical sector, etc., service sectors, even churches, for instance. But one of the things with retail direction is that if workers have the possibility that they're going to come in contact with money, uh, then they're supposed to be wearing gloves. These gloves are PPE that protect the worker. So if you have this issue regarding workers wearing gloves and you handling your groceries, go somewhere else, okay? Because we're just look, people are just looking at protecting the workers that are working for them. In other words, what's happening is the employers are actually paying attention to the workers and caring for the workers. So if you dislike the use of gloves by retail workers, then I suggest you shop somewhere else or go to Amazon. Oh, by the way, chances are those Amazon workers were wearing gloves themselves because the only other choice they have is after handling something to use hand sanitizer. And with the amount of times that they would have to sanitize their hands, they would look like hamburger by the end of the day. Just to uh, summarize all of this, 
No layer will be effective on its own. There needs to be multiple layers for effectiveness. As I mentioned, I left out contract tracing and surface cleaning, and I did it for a reason. If you're putting controls in place to control something, you should be monitoring those controls. And what contract trick that up, that's a mouthful. What contact tracing and surface clean, or pardon me, what contact tracing and uh, testing do is they help the medical community to monitor the controls that they've put in place. And if we allow for this uh, fast and sensitive testing and contract contact tracing to occur, then guess what? We don't have to have things like elimination where we're not all stuck in our homes again. Take part in contact tracing, take part in testing. If you feel that you need to get tested, go get tested. Now, once again, Beyond the layered approach, we need to cooperate and be patient with one another and the healthcare system and our governments. We have to do this and wait on this until a reasonable solution such as an effective vaccine comes along. So anyway, do me a favor. If you like the video, click that like button. Just give it a click. And if you didn't, by all means, you can click that unlike button. But do me a favor, put a comment below and let me know why. If you're new to the channel and safety is your thing, and you want to see more videos on safety, then do me a favor and click that subscribe button. Ding the bell, you'll get notified of new content. As I said, I'm going to leave some links to the videos. And if you want to click on this side, you will see a video on the hierarchy of controls, and it will help you to understand what I meant in this video. You can always come back and watch this one. And on this side, I'll leave a video to the one I made regarding masks, or a link, pardon me, to the masks. Anyway, do me a favor. Until we talk again, think safety, talk safety, do safety. When you do that, you provoke safety at home and in the workplace. And if we're provoking safety, isn't everything going to be safer? Anyway, bye for now.